Look, I know I'm technically a week late on the subject, but I can explain. Last week, I was out of town. I was on vacation, so there was literally no way I could have made this video. However, I did pre-record three videos that I was going to upload to YouTube and have them go live last week. I had already made the videos, they were ready to go. All I had to do was upload them to YouTube. Problem is, yeah, I'm not, you know, the smartest person out here, so I forgot to upload them, so that's why you guys didn't get videos last week, but you guys were supposed to get three videos last week, but, you know, I'm not exactly smart, so... I ended up forgetting to do that, so, you know, last week there was no videos, but I'm back now, and, you know, I got some more videos coming your guys' way, so, don't worry about that, we're back now. Now, let's talk about the Texans GM situation. Look, when I first seen it, you know, the Texans backed out on Nick Casario, I was pissed, man, like, the Texans took yet another L to the Patriots, and that's really what pissed me off. I wasn't pissed off about, you know, missing out on Nick Casario. I was pissed off about the Texans, you know, they just backed down from the Patriots. They had the Patriots by the neck. Like, this literally could have been the first win the Texans had against the Patriots in forever. But, you know, the Texans, they back down. And, yeah, it's annoying. I mean, they did all that, fired Brian Gain, went after a guy many organizations have wanted. And it's obvious that Nick Casario wants to come here. There's even been reports that came out that Nick Casario wants out. He really wants the Texans GM job. So, the Texans would have won this tampering case and they would have got Nick Serio if they would have just stuck through it but you know in typical Texans fashion in my opinion they backed down like seriously dude like and I'm not even mad about missing out on Nick Serio honestly and I was telling Tinny if you guys know soft sports Tinny I was telling him on Twitter I was more pissed about losing to the Patriots again even if it wasn't losing a game we still took a loss to them because the Texans backed down. They would have won that tampering case. There was nothing to prove it. And then, you know, at the end of it all, the Patriots come out with a statement saying, Oh, the Houston Texans and the Patriots have always had a great working relationship. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, seriously? Now, who cares, man? You have a chance. And I know the Patriots don't see us as a rival but the Texans had a chance to take a person from the front office of one of the Texans biggest rivals one of those teams that we can't seem to beat it's the Patriots obviously the Texans had a chance to take one of the guys that they don't want to lose because it's obvious you know that the Patriots went out of their way to make sure they didn't lose Nick Serio and my thought process was if the Patriots don't want to lose that guy then this guy might be good so, you know, why not? Let's go get him. So, that kind of really pissed me off. The Texans could have had him, but the Texans decided to go with the nice guy route. Because apparently, Nick Casario's contract runs out after the season. And, you know, the Patriots just ended up scaring the Texans. And they're making the Texans wait another year to possibly hire Nick Casario. So... Yeah, that's a huge L in my opinion. I mean, all you have to do was stick through with it, and it doesn't really matter, honestly. Like, who cares about a working relationship with the Patriots, dude? Like, these guys constantly, they constantly beat you on the field. Like, why do you want to have a good working relationship with a team that you can't beat? A team that's always in your way. You should be going for their throats. Take that guy from them. That's really what I'm pissed about. I'm not pissed about missing out on Xero.
because odds are we're probably still going to get him in 2020. But we could have literally took him away from the Patriots against their own will, and that would have been a win for the Texans. But instead, the Texans go the nice route, and, you know, typical Texans. A little goody two shoe franchise, but, you know, I still have to give Cal McNair credit. He saw something he didn't like, and he moved on from it quick instead of sticking through with it for 9, 10 years, similar to what Bob McNair would have done. And I will say this, the Texans, from a national level, probably even from a local level, they look stupid. <laughs> like, trust me, you know, after one year or, you know, 17, 18 months, after 18 months, they fire a GM go after a GM from the Patriots, they even get accused of tampering, and then they back down, and now they have no GM. So from, you know, just an outside perspective, the Texans look stupid, and in my opinion, they deserve it, because they should have stuck through with it. But if we're being honest, I think this is a best-case scenario. Like, what happened to the Texans, them backing down, them being scared of the Patriots, I think Texans fans, or majority of Texans fans, should be happy that happened. Why? Because majority of Texans fans don't like Bill O'Brien. And missing out on Nick Casario puts all the pressure on Bill O'Brien moving forward. So, like I've said before, this is a make-it-or-break-it year for Bill O'Brien. The Texans either reach new heights, meaning AFC Championship game, might even be a Super Bowl or bust situation. Either that happens, or Bill O'Brien's gone. And I think it's pretty obvious that Cal McNair has higher expectations than Bob McNair. And I'm pretty sure I've said this in the video before. The first thing that, you know, Cal McNair showed to me that he had higher expectations was a couple months back Pat Dietz stat on Twitter said that Cal McNair was still pissed about the Texans losing to the Eagles you guys remember that game of course you know we win that game we have the number two seed first round by home field advantage all that good stuff but the Texans they lost to the Eagles and Cal McNair was pissed about that and if you guys know Bob McNair would have forgot about that game like two hours after we lost that game and he wouldn't have really cared but Cal McNair showed that he cared he wants to bring a championship to Houston so expectations are high with Cal McNair and then obviously fired Brian Gain after he thought he didn't do a good enough job to bring a championship to Houston so now it all falls on Bill O'Brien Bill O'Brien's got to perform he's got to take this team new heights or He's gone. All the pressure is now on Bill O'Brien. And personally, I love that. I think this season, the Texans should not have a GM. I think this season, Bill O'Brien should be the GM. Let him do everything. Let this be his prove-it year. No more excuses for Bill O'Brien. No more well, you know, Brian Gain didn't get me the right players. Or, you know, me and Rick Smith don't see eye to eye. So, you know, there's problems there. Now it's all Bill O'Brien. He's the guy in complete control of the team. If something fails, who does that fall on? Bill O'Brien. 100% should be on Bill O'Brien this year. And if you're a fan of Texas, like I said, you should be happy because majority of this fan base wants Bill O'Brien gone, and this just makes it harder on Bill O'Brien, and in my opinion, Bill O'Brien coaches at his best when his back is against the wall, and when I say that, I think back to two games in the Bill O'Brien era. The first game being, I believe it was 2014, you know, Fitzpatrick went down, Ryan Mallett went down, Tom Savage went down, so we had to go get Case Keenum and Case Keenum was over there hunting deers or something. I forgot exactly what he was doing, but he was a free agent. We picked him up. He comes in one week later and 
we end up beating the Ravens, Bill O'Brien completely outcoached John Harbaugh. And the other situation, there was another similar situation. You know, quarterbacks get hurt. You know, we had cut Ryan Mallett, and then Brian Hoyer went down with a concussion. And in comes TJ Yates. We play the Jets. And keep in mind, this is the year where the Jets went 10-6. and six. So this was a pretty good Jets team. They had Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick probably had one of his best seasons that year. And the Texans go in there. Bill O'Brien completely outcoaches Todd Bowles. So in my opinion, Bill O'Brien is at his best when his back is against the wall. And, you know, putting Bill O'Brien in a situation where he has complete control over the team, he's the GM, he's the head coach, I don't think Bill O'Brien's back can be any closer against the wall than that. So if you're going to get the best out of Bill O'Brien, I think that's what you have to do. This is a make it or break it year for him. If he performs, then guess what? Nick Casario's contract runs out next year. So then you go pick him up and then he's Bill O'Brien's GM. You know, that's assuming Bill O'Brien takes the Texans to new heights. And if Bill O'Brien doesn't do that, if the Texans, you know, go to the playoffs and they get beat in the first round or even the second round for that case, then Bill O'Brien is going to get fired. And not only that, now there's no GM up front. So what do you do? You completely clean house. New GM, new front office, new coaches. And I feel like majority of Texans fan base wants that. So, again, it puts the Texans in a win-win situation. Either Bill O'Brien performs well with his back against the wall and the Texans reach new heights. Or you get a completely brand new Texans, pretty much. New coaching staff, new front office, and I think that would be good for the Texans if they don't perform well. So, in my opinion, I think the Texans should stick with no GM for the rest of the season. Let things play out, see what happens. Maybe we do reach new heights, and maybe we just reach the playoffs, but the usual happens. Maybe we just completely suck, who knows, but... I think this is the best case scenario for the Texans, going through with no GM. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys for today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.